But I want to give you the opportunity, and you've touched on it earlier about how one mistake um, and the use of a derogatory um, word that as as late as as early as yesterday, I, I was telling people, I'm sure Myers didn't understand what that word meant, nor the impact that it would have. Absolutely. Um, tell how that one has affected you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the things that you have done, like, I, I know you, I know you're sure. a people person, you're going to want to learn the, the various things that take place. What, what, how did that affect you? What steps have you taken? And, and how has the reception from the Jewish community been since you have been out there? And again, learning about that uh, word, as well as just building relationships with the community. Sure. So this is... Uh maybe the most important long-winded um, kind of answer I, I, I have to give here. First and foremost, I'm sorry to anybody who I offended, including you, Dion. Um, and I, I made a big mistake, a very ignorant one. Um, I'll never forget the, the day that you know, it started to blow up on social media. I didn't know how to react. I, I walked out, um, my wife was on a business call and she said, I can't talk right now. I said, no, no, please, I, I need to talk. And I said to her, honey, I don't know what this word means. I don't know what I've done. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm scared. And I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So I, I will tell you from the bottom of my heart, I did absolutely not know what this word meant. It was over time, I believe that I had heard various vulgar and bad language in Call of Duty lobbies. There's no other way to put it. If anybody knows well, anything my about daughter gaming, plays, so I know. <laughs> so if anybody knows anything about gaming, specifically, you know, um, uh, high paced uh, Call of Duty type of games, it can get it can get absolutely nasty in these comments, right? Because we all have a headset on. Was I partaking? No. But is, are there things you hear along the way? Absolutely. And this is nothing more than me being an ignorant fool in a heated moment of a video game and saying something very, very stupid. I did not know what I meant. And I since have absolutely educated myself and I'm, and I'm gonna jump into that now um, and learned how hurtful it was. And that, that's what crushes me the most. Dion, you asked me how it impacted me. This shouldn't really be about me because I hurt other people by the use of this word, right? But I'm still a human being. And I, I do believe, and quite frankly, faith and uh, religion is a, a big part of this. So long as someone deserves it and they show you that they're, they're remorseful is forgiveness, right? And love. And I, did I make a huge mistake? Absolutely. Will I regret it the rest of my life? Yes. But am I going to walk up to you, Dion, next time I see you in person? Um, which will likely be Monday or, you know, anybody I meet and say, Hey, I'm Myers Leonard. And by the way, I made this big mistake. Nice to meet you. No, I'm just going to treat them the way I always would with love. And how can I help you? How can I serve you? And so again, I just made a stupid, silly mistake, but I will tell you, you know, obviously the league had to jump in. They had to do their interviews and this and that, and I was fined. And then I was, you know, then I was off the team and all these different things. It wasn't really hard. Yes. Um, did I deserve to be punished? Absolutely. But so many months now away from said incident, do I believe that? And, and am I hopeful that people will forgive me and love, love me and know man that I am at the heart that's in my chest? Yes, that too. And 36 hours later, I was lucky enough to actually give a quick little story. Every time I went to Toronto, uh, there was this Jewish man that I'd become friends with, and his little son loved NBA basketball, and so did he. And I would always uh, leave them post-game passes because I didn't really have anybody else in Toronto to give them to. This is just through a mutual friend of a player. He would hit me up and say, hey, do you mind if my son and I come to the game? And I'd say, heck yeah, I'd love to see you guys again. So for his bar mitzvah, by the way, I'll never forget, the, my eighth year in the league, they said like, hey, he, the father said to me, it's my son's bar mitzvah. Would you sign me a pair of shoes? I will do anything. And I said, goodness, you don't have to say you do anything. I'd love to give a pair of shoes. That's incredible. Like I, I'd love to be a part of that very impactful part of 
and, you know, transitional part of his life. And so this mutual friend had reached out to a man named Rabbi Penny, who I'm very, very close with now down in South Florida. A good friend of mine, by the way, is my rabbi. (laughs) Oh my gosh. We'll get into this maybe after the call, but so I had, I called Rabbi Penny and, and I said, look, first and foremost, I'm just so sorry. I mean, I'm sobbing on the phone. He can't see me in person at this time, but I'm sobbing and he's giving me time to, you know, just kind of get the emotion out. And he said, Myers, I don't know you, but I'm going to get to know you. I can feel, I can sense this, um, you know, and I said to him, okay, you know, I would honestly love to meet and just sit in front of you and show you and talk to you and, and, and have you understand that this was nothing more than he said, I'd love to, Myers, you tell me when. I said, as soon as possible. He said, I'll meet you at 8 a.m. I'll text you my address. So he is um, the head of a Chabad in South Florida. And I, exactly right. And I didn't know, you know, what that meant at the time. If I'm being honest, I had to start to educate myself. I said, okay, I'll be there. I'll do anything. So I'll never forget pulling up. And I see Rabbi Penny standing there. And I see a man with a big beard. Um, (laughs) And I think to myself, oh my gosh, what is he going to think? I mean, again, this is kind of the, I'm not asking for people to feel bad for me. I'm not. But I think to myself, like, oh man, what is this guy going to think of me, man? Like, what have I done? I just want people to love me. I I didn't mean anything, you know, hurtful by this, although I know it was hurtful. So I get out of the truck and he's got a big smile on my face. He gives me a hug. We walk inside. We go to his office. We sit down and I start to explain, you know, the event and, that I just made a stupid mistake and, you know, a heated moment of video games. I didn't know what I was saying. And I just remember he just kind of sat there real calm. And he said, Myers, I can tell already in two minutes, I I see that you didn't mean this. You're a good man. You know, did you make a mistake? Yes. Was it hurtful to some people? Yes. But are you going to make this right? And will I help you make this right? Yes. And so we talked for another good Lord, two hours, probably and developed instantly a special bond um and the next night you know as i'm leaving i said hey i just want to learn more actually yeah as i'm leaving i said hey i just would like to learn more what are your recommendations you know i really obviously i can try to look things up on the internet so he gave me a couple books to check out um one was essentially the, the 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 story and the guidance of the rebbe and I was, and now every time I see a picture of the Rebbe, I, I said to actually a Jewish friend when I walked in their house, oh, there's the Rebbe. They're like, you know who that is? And I was like, yeah, I'm learning. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, I started to read, read those books. And I said to him, right as I was walking out after gathering this, this stuff to learn, I said, hey, uh, is there another way I can see you soon? I, I'd love to continue our relationship. He said, well, tomorrow night we're having Shabbat dinner. And I said, okay. Um, I've heard of my, you know, my, some of my Jewish friends doing that. I don't really know exactly. Like, can I join? He's like, we'd love to have you. So what Rabbi Penny did was he then gathered people from the community, whether it was young Jewish basketball fans of the Miami heat, um, um, a couple of close friends of his who are adults in the community. Basically he wanted me to have a great first experience, not only in a Shabbat dinner, But in front of a group of people, not only for me to be able to say I'm sorry and I made a mistake and ask for forgiveness, but more importantly, to put loving people around me to, you know, uh, show me that it's clear that I'm remorseful and that I'm and I'm learning and I'm educating myself even just in real time, 24 hours, 48 hours, um, and that, you know, I. I, I, I need that love. And he, he felt that and he sensed that. So I'm so thankful for him for that. So I showed up for Shabbat dinner. I, I showed up at his house at seven. I did not leave his driveway until like, I remember looking at the clock, I believe 12, 13 AM. It was such a powerful night for me to learn and to see the love in the room, to get the sense of togetherness, And to just unplug from the world for a minute and have eye to eye communication and real feelings and emotions towards human beings, which, by the way, we are missing in this world now. Right. We are missing. Everyone's looking at their darn phone all the time. 
and, you know, doing this or doing that. We're always busy. We're trying to make money. We're trying to, I said to my friends, when I left, I called my best friend and I said, you know, this is my first Shabbat dinner and, you know, trying to understand the Sabbath and everything, but this is genius. Everybody <laughs> needs to do this. I'm not kidding you. When I say this, like unplugging from the world and just yep. saying like, Whoa, there's time times where we got to grind and we got to work and we got to do this and that. But guess what? Sometimes we just need to unplug for a minute and just be thankful for what's our family, what's around us, everything, you know, all the good things. Um, and so I, I went to Shabbat dinner and it was incredible. Um, yeah. I'll also tell you, my wife and I visited uh, the Holocaust Memorial in Miami beach. Talk about an emotional experience. Yeah. I, we sat down and we watched an educational video, which I, I believe was probably 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's part of kind of the tour that they would put a group of students say through. Mm -hmm. And then we walked down through the walls and, 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 and read about all the people that had passed and, you know, some of the more significant, you know, timestamps kind of, of, of that unfort very, very, of course, unfortunate time. And the memorial, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've posted it a few times on my but it, uh, social media, but if you haven't type in Miami, beach uh, holocaust memorial the level of uh, artistry like the level of, of power emotion that comes out of you in 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 a sense of responding to this immaculate piece of artwork and you know um love and um fortitude of jewish people is just incredible my wife walked around the entire thing. And as we came down and I looked at it, I, I just stopped. And I, I didn't know how to, like, I'm going to get emotional thinking of this. I just, tears poured because I see like the, the agony and these, the way that they, you know, portray is just yeah. very it's powerful. Very powerful. Uh, and I just I stood there and cried and cried and cried. And my wife continued to walk around and look at different things there. And it was time to go. And I just, you know, I kind of brushed my eyes off and, and we walked up. But, but guess what? They had something set up for me, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a survivor. His, his name was Alan. And to sit there and to hear his story was just so meaningful to me. Number one, that he would share. Um, you know, he speaks to, you know, student, student bodies and um, schools all the time, but for him to be willing to share, that means something to me, right? Because I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to show you how, uh, you know, remorseful and sorry I truly am. So uh, I don't want to continue to ramble, like people are going to be listening to this podcast, like, man, this is gonna be a nine hour podcast. But, <laughs> but I did, I, I'm happy to say I sponsored um, a, a, a Passover event which was absolutely incredible. We went to Rabbi Penny and I and a couple of his close friends um, there at the Chabad. We went to, I want to say, eight to 10 different um, homes to visit. We met with two survivors that day and then, then just other families that were um, Jewish and in, in, in need during that time. Mm -hmm. We delivered meals. That was my part of my sp sponsor. Uh, was, was to help Rabbi Penny. And just, again, hearing the stories of those two individuals and from families that have, of course, experienced pain, that starts to, in the weirdest of ways, build not only, I guess, my understanding, but again, kind of this emotion and love and, and stuff that now is being pushed in uh, um, kind of uh, the love is... It's, it's hard to explain. I, they, they didn't, most of these people didn't even know me. They right. just thought I was some nice young man bringing them food and such for Passover. And I just, uh, this woman had talked and she was older, much older, of course, she's, you know, survivor. And she, when she was talking about her parents and such, I mean, I was just, I was on my, I was on my knees next to her because she was in a recliner. And I would, I mean, just the tears were pouring. And I, I just told her, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for, you know, and, and she said that she occasionally can get out and go speak to also, you know, students, uh, you know, about love and forgiveness and, you know, passion in life and, and different things. But, you know, again, I, I, I could truly go on about 
I don't know, maybe 10 probably more events or more that I've since been to. You know, I went to uh, in L.A. It just so happens that a very close friend of mine who's from New York, his daughter was out playing in L.A., you know, at the um, at a uh, Jewish school there, which, by the way, I didn't know this. The school I'd worked out last two summers ago, I didn't I didn't really look around. I'm a goofy guy. I walk in, I do my basketball workout and I leave. I didn't realize that I was pulling up to a Jewish school. <laughs> And my trainer said to me, by the way, don't worry. I talked to the, the people here. They know who you are. You've been through a full summer. You say hello to everybody every morning when you walk in. How are you? How can I do anything for you? So again, Dion, at the end of the day, here's all I can hope for. And I guess I'd say I'd ask for from anybody, including a Illini Nation, whether they're Jewish or not, is forgiveness. And to say, you know, this kid made a mistake. Yes. Did, did I deserve some punishment? Sure. But am I hopeful for forgiveness and love? Absolutely. And so I will continue to do my best to impact people um, in any way I possibly can.